POWERFUL TORNADO IN QUEEN ANNE'S COUNTY DEALING WITH WIDESPREAD DAMAGE AFTER HOMES ARE TORN APART BY THE DEVASTATING STORM. THE TWISTER'S WIND SPEEDS REACH MORE THAN 120 MILES PER HOUR, KNOCKING DOWN TREES AND POWER LINES. TAKE A LIVE LOOK OUTSIDE RIGHT NOW FROM SKY CHOPPER 13. A LONG CLEANUP PROCESS IS JUST BEGINNING WITH DEBRIS SCATTERED ALL AROUND THE BAY CITY AREA. WJC is live with first morning weather coverage. Meg McNamara is on Kent Island with the WJC Mobile Weather Lab with more on the water spout that strengthened to a powerful tornado. First, Rick Ritter and WJC investigator Mike Helgren are live in some of the hardest hit areas. Mike. Vic, uh, we can tell you tonight that uh, a lot of people are frustrated they didn't get the tornado warning until the storm already had touched down here. And we've seen the buzz of cleanup around the neighborhood, but some people have lost everything, like the man who lived in this home. And we want to show you something here. The whole home collapsed around him, but the china is still untouched in the china cabinet, one of the many incredible scenes from this storm. The powerful tornado was on the ground for just four minutes. But cleanup here will take days. It's not only rare that an EF2 tornado hit the eastern shore, but rare it hit after midnight without warning. There was no alert to after the event, and uh, it's just very upsetting. You really got to be have your finger on the pulse of the weather all the time. I mean, day and night. Almost everyone in the Bay City neighborhood, the hardest hit, got frighteningly close to the danger. The gentleman right across the street from me had two trees go right through and, and crisscross him over his bed, and uh, he was able to crawl out. Uh, my daughter had a tree right over top of her bed, and um, luckily she, you know, she was okay. We were able to get out, and um, we're just, you know, everybody's just lucky to be alive. It was just after one Monday morning when fast-moving storms raced east, picking up steam, hitting the cooler waters of the bay, then the warmer land of Kent Island. The tornado, with winds more than 120 miles an hour, tore through this neighborhood, destroying 14 homes, but killing no one. Looking at the damage and the path the storm took in the community that it hit, we can't believe that there was only one injury that we had to transport to a hospital. We are very lucky, very fortunate. And, and looking at an aerial view of the storm, it was almost like somebody steered it through the neighborhood away from homes. Now the hard work is underway, getting back to the normal that was taken away so suddenly. And another live look from above from Sky Eye Chopper 13. There is a lot of cleanup work left to do here in the Bay City community and throughout uh, this part of the Eastern Shore and Kent Island. There has been no official estimate of the damages. However, it's expected to run into the millions of dollars. Live in Bay City, Mike Helgren, WJZ Eyewitness News. Mike, thank you. And our complete coverage does continue now with Captain Jeff Long and Sky Chopper 13 with what the area looks like today. Jeff. Well, we've been looking at the cleanup all day long, but we do want to show you what it looks like right now as we fly along that path of destruction that this F2 tornado, EF2 tornado left behind on in Bay City. You can see there's everywhere you look in on Kent Island right now, specifically in the Bay City area, there's a lot of blue tarps on roofs. There's trees that are snapped in half, and uh, this is the way the the storm kind of flew and then right about here it takes a little bit of a jog to the right heading to the northeast and just to the north of where we are right now is the Bay Bridge Airport. It did dodge the Bay Bridge Airport but it picked up uh, some strength and actually took the roofs off some townhouses but this house right here off of the creek received uh, substantial damage and uh, we're not even sure if they're going to be able to salvage what's left of this home and uh, the people on Kent Island are pulling together. This is a tight community Community, uh, neighbors helping out neighbors, and it does. Uh, it's pretty sure pretty, we're pretty sure that they're going to get back to normal pretty quickly. In fact, the Kent Island Fire Department canceled the carnival last night, but they are having it tonight. Reporting live from Sky Chopper 13, I'm Captain Jeff Long. Back to you. Captain Jeff, thank you so much for that. Our complete coverage continues now with Rick Ritter live in Stevensville with a new look at an area pummeled by that tornado. Hi, Rick. Well, just while Bay City may have been hit the hardest, Stevensville is not far behind. That tornado came through with winds at more than 120 miles per hour, and this is what's left of the back building of a local church. The damage 
really is unbelievable. Now the cleanup process is just getting started. The sounds of cleanup echo through the streets of Stevensville, but just hours before... You just don't expect anything like this. It was sounds of horror. It just sounded like somebody was taking sledgehammers and hitting my house. The F2 tornado barreled through the area, destruction that mirrors images in the Midwest. Uh, showed up to this. This was part of Pastor Thomas Leonard's church. This used to be... Uh, uh, basically a pole building. The whole back building, like it never existed. Destroyed. There's pieces of our building all strewn throughout the neighborhood. It crumbled just hours before kids were supposed to be there for Bible school. Did you ever think something like this could happen on the Eastern Shore? No, it's just kind of hard to believe. It really is. Right next door, Mark Edwards' automotive shop had debris tossed into it like darts. It looks like the track of the tornado went across, knocked that building out. Caught the end of my building. The longtime owner counts his blessings. Everybody's walking, talking, got all their limbs. You know, because this battle cut somebody right in half. In surrounding neighborhoods, trees remain down, siding of homes peeled like a banana, debris scattered. They completely took my boat and shoved it into this boat, into that boat. While the aftermath could take weeks there. to clean up, the entire community is doing it together. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. We want to move forward. And it can certainly take weeks to clean up damage like this. Tonight, we're being told almost everyone has power back except for a few dozen homes. And donations can be made to the Kent Island United Methodist Church. Live along the Eastern Shore tonight, I'm Rick Ritter, WJZ Eyewitness News. Rick, thank you. Our first warning weather coverage continues. Meg McNamara is live with the WJZ Mobile Weather Lab in Queen Anne's County with more on the water spout that strengthened into that powerful tornado. Meg? Well, that's right, Jessica. I'm Big McNamara, and yes, we are live with the WJZ Mobile Weather Lab, and we are here in Stevensville on a very, very busy couple of blocks here. So lots of traffic as different crews try to get in and out. Recovery efforts in full swing. Lots of tree removal happening. Earlier today, we saw crews restoring power, but we just keep hearing from neighbors about how shocked they are, and we really can't blame them when we consider just how rare this is for our area. So the Mid-Atlantic usually sees two tornadoes a year and they're EF zeros. So the fact that this was a water spout that turned into an EF2 tornado is absolutely astounding. Meteorologist Mitchell Gaines was on the ground here on Ken Island on Monday. His team from the National Weather Service determined that it was an EF2 tornado with maximum winds of 125 miles an hour that tore through this community. I spoke to him earlier today and he explained what he saw. The boat was flipped uh, from, from down on the beach level, uh, further on up, uh, lifting higher in elevation and further inland uh, into someone's front yard, actually. And also, we had a uh, considerable amount of damage to the houses uh, right along the shore as well in the Bay City area. The thunderstorms moved east, getting stronger over the bay. One became a water spout, then a tornado as it moved on shore. A very rare event. The temperatures in Chesapeake Bay are coming up for this time of the year. Uh, with that warm water in place, in addition to a very uh, summertime like air mass with a lot of heat and humidity around, uh, that, that generally tends to provide storms a lot of energy. The tornado tracked over two miles. A touchdown in certain spots uh, would, would lift randomly at certain points in the track before, before touching down again. Well, and today we're getting a break from the heat, the humidity, and those storms, but it does look like there's more on the way coming up. Of course, in the first warning forecast, we'll talk about what we can expect for the rest of the week. But for now, I'm Meg McNamara, live in Stevensville with the WJZ Mobile Weather Lab, back inside to the studio. Meg, thank you. Here's what you need to know about the powerful tornado. Only a few dozen people are still without power. 14 homes are destroyed. Dozens more are damaged. One person was injured in the storm. The Red Cross has provided assistance to about 300 people in the area.